The core of the book that I've written is that if you are able to apply dialogue in a more systematic way in your role as both leader and as the one who is following, that you will become more effective, that you will become more authentic, and that you also will become more uh, ethical in how you behave, how you influence people around you. Because, and that's the core of my book, is you are always in both positions. No one is just a leader, you're always leading and following. Dialogical leadership is about two dimensions of dialogue. The first one is the external dialogue. Uh, when do you have to apply the external dialogue? Uh, normally we say when you are confronted with wicked issues, you apply the external dialogue. You create the conditions with your people that you're able to talk about what are the basic values from which we act. What is the purpose that binds us together? Because for wicked issues, for instance, like uh, the globalization or warming the, uh, warming the earth or terrorism, you uh, really have to go to the fundamentals of why you are together. There are no pre-given answers in the manual uh, as contrasted to technical issues where in technical issues you can find the answer in the manual and you use rational debate discussion to convince other people or crisis where you have to take the lead that's the external dimension of the dialogical leadership in, in taking the dialogue the internal aspect is that you as a leader and as a follower have to reflect on what are the, the, the several internal positions that I can take. For instance, I as a professional, I am a, a professor of dialogical leadership. How does that relate to me being, uh, for instance, a director within Deloitte Consulting? What is the tension between the two? Am I able to reconcile these two? Normally, in the theory, and that's also what I'm doing in the book, I distinguish between the entrepreneur, the manager, and the coach, the change leader, and the professional, which are five basic roles that you have to reconcile within yourself as a leader and a follower. The biggest advantage of this concept is that you're able to flexibly switch between the different modes of influencing. One being having a discussion, convincing people, and that you're able to switch towards uh, what we call a dialogue. In a dialogue, you listen, truly listen, you suspend your judgment, you visibly show respect for what people around you think and do and act. And you are able to also voice what is on your mind. So if you're able to flexibly and proactively switch between these different styles, you will be more effective, what I said in the beginning, more authentic and also more ethical. And people will be more willing to work with you because you are more connected in this uh, mutual influencing relation. In my book, I uh, give a, an extensive example of how I worked as a director from Deloitte Consulting with Canon OC. So we worked with the, the team of the board and the senior vice presidents for over two years. And um, this case, more than 30 pages, illustrates how you can do this from the beginning, preparing the minds of the people for the program, for the process, until what are the results, uh, and the results are more effectively dealing with wicked issues that are on your, on your table as a board. That's, uh, so in that sense, you can apply this. Uh, another level is the level of science where we have to apply this, is that you, um, we have to, as scientists, rethink what essentially is leadership. What is uh, leadership and as related to followership? And also on a personal level, this is what I'm also doing in the book. I describe what happened during my career where I try to reconcile the different roles I was in. And I am still in. For instance, the most important is uh, me as a professional, as a professor of dialogical leadership, and me as a consultant, as uh, opposed, for instance, to me as a husband, me as a father and a grandfather. 
that's where the book might help you very much to, let's say, make that also clear for yourself. Is it enough to just read the book? Read the book, use the questions, reflect on the questions, and that will be enough uh, to really realistically reflect, especially if you also uh, organize uh, a dialogue with your boss, with your peers, with people around you, and with people also privately at home.